private sector has an important role to play if appropriately partnered with and managed um, to play in disaster response, not least from the know-how that they bring to the table, and in many cases, the actual supply chain logistics capabilities. I think you should use every everything available to you. And yeah, that means that you'll have to put some safeguards into place and you'll have to be aware that um, you know, there are equities that people have. But in reality, that's no different than a political negotiation. Everybody comes to a discussion with their own set of what it is they're hoping to get out of it. The private sector is no different. But it also doesn't mean that their motivations are inherently cynical. And I think that there can be an expectation that the private sector is looking at something from a purely for-profit motive. I don't think that's true anymore. I think that actually the growth of corporate social responsibility outlets and the importance of doing well while doing good has really sunk in, particularly with a lot of lar large companies. I think that there's an opportunity there for us to build essentially a compact. And it's not just with the private sector, it's with the international NGO community, it's with other aspects of civic society, it's with local governance structures. There's any number of outlets, of, uh, of entities that can bring their resources and their skills to bear. But, you know, if, if we're going to do a massive logistics project, I would like a professional logistician doing that. And I think that that really simplistic way of looking at it means that you should look at who has what assets and then look at bringing them to bear. Because the reality is that the level right now of crisis is so high across the board, whether it's peace and security or environmental or, or, or otherwise, that we really need all the help we can get. So I think there's a, a real need for companies to look at how they can make a strategic contribution to the well-being and development of a nation and not just um, a more geographically um, limited contribution because they may in certain contexts be reaping extraordinary reward but how can some of that re reward be more broadly shared in the society. I think the other part of this equation is that there are pools of capital in the world that are looking for infrastructure opportunities and in so many of the post-conflict contexts infrastructure needs to be built. Now, it's not so easy as saying this capital it can't be directed. Capital has a mind of its own. Um, it can't be directed to invest in infrastructure. Um, but I think policymakers can do a lot more to think about, about ways to bridge this. So it's not just the public taxpayer that's going to be paying for the roads and the housing and the power stations and all the infrastructure that needs to be built. There are ways that that private capital can help underwrite the costs of reconstruction.